the voice doesn't sound German, but I actually am. Uh, so I'm a German, German father, Swedish mother. I uh, grew up in Germany, uh, but moved from, to the States in 92, and now I've been in Sweden since, I don't know, 2009, I think? Well, I've been, I moved around a lot. Been with Microsoft since 95, started in developer support. Uh, mostly C, C++ stuff. Uh, my background is really much lower level drivers and then, you know, Win32. And I always hated abstraction because I'm a control freak uh, to some degree. So, But PowerShell gives you a lot of control in it, even though it's very abstract. So it's a little bit of both worlds here. So um, my job and my title here is I'm a premier field engineer. Uh, I work out of Sweden. I, I don't know if I've, any of you have heard of PFEs or work with PFEs. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, I sort of, I lev left the dev space, the ISV space, and came into the enterprise space. And uh, I was working with a lot of OEMs, uh, actually you know, helping with Windows 8, uh, 8.1, uh, a lot of embedded systems and stuff like that. And now I'm doing a lot of, uh, helping with a lot of deployment, doing a lot of proof of concept in Azure, and that type of thing. Also done a lot of stuff with Exchange uh, in PowerShell, because there's a lot of craziness going on there. Uh, and um, basically educating a lot of people within Microsoft uh, EMEA actually on PowerShell. So um, that's part of what I do as well. So this is going to be a little journey. It's my five or four day journey. It seems like five um, into the uh, PowerShell script analyzer. And so I talked to, um, uh, to the PowerShell org guys and asked if I could present and I'm looking for topics and just threw this one in the air. And then went on vacation and didn't really think about it and realized oh, I have to present something. So then I started, uh, I found the time and luckily this, this awesome audience is here that helped with a lot of really cool ideas. So actually I used the first day to collect a lot of my last uh, bullet points here and uh, it's all come together. So actually I have to thank a lot of the presenters like Krishna and Tobias and, and actually everybody uh, for some of the ideas that are gonna be in here. And some of my journey, helping me go through the journey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Before you do, do you, uh, do you have a Twitter handle? I don't tweet other than tweet. Oh, that's, about, <laughs> that's, about, that's about as good as it gets. Uh, I'm not, I, that's, I have, to, I'm really ashamed because I have, I mean, I have boatloads of really cool uh, utility scripts that I write on a daily basis. I, if somebody wants to blog them, you know, I can dump all my scripts in your lap. Um, I really am embarrassed about that, uh, that I don't have the time to do that. But as you see, I'm not a PowerPoint fan. I don't really, I mean, you, you saw a lot of typos in here already. It's not, I'm more into, you know, the coding bit and just getting results. And I'm kind of a kid. I like to stuff everything in my, in my uh, PowerShell and see what it does, right? So GM is my favorite and best friend. And then also IntelliSense and all the new stuff that came in ISE. So this is my, like I said, this is my journey. So I'm taking you through this journey. And the idea behind this is also that you're probably going to go on this journey as well. So I didn't want to give you like, uh, like I want to sort of show you the steps that I went through. Uh, and it's kind of, some of it's embarrassing. Maybe a lot of you think, ah, oh, I probably went down that route too. So what I've done here is I put together this big old PowerShell script, right? And I talk about um, sort of the steps that I went through. So there are a lot, of, first off, how many of you have heard of like static code analysis? Okay, and so how many of you actually work with .NET or, okay, so you've heard of FXCOP. Mm -hmm. Anybody use Bounce Checker by any chance? Okay, okay, so there's some C++ guys here in the, in the back. Uh, so, so those are the days that I was working on it. Um, but anyway, static code analysis will allow you to basically parse through code and here you can look at structures and find out, uh, find out where the problems in the syntax and the grammar and things. Compilers basically do this to a greater extent as well. So when you compile code, and all this code, partial code, is ultimately getting compiled down to IL, and then it goes down to native. So, so everything's good. There's a, actually a parser in here as well. There are different levels of parsing that actually happens. So the parsing that we're going to be using or looking at a lot is actually a lot that uh, Tobias has already talked about, the, the parser with AST. Uh, so that's built into the framework with PowerShell. Uh, so there's a, a structured... Uh, uh, type, uh, types there. And then we have, so anyway, this is what I went through. My, like I said, this is my journey. And so the first script analyzer that I, that I found, and I don't know if you've seen this, it actually was integrated with something called the script browser. Has anybody seen this? There's, uh, I think it was 1.4 came out. And so it had, this is what it looks like. So there's, I have some references in this slide here too. So I bring up references. This is sort of like a, a wiki, PowerShell wiki, I guess. Uh, on, the, on my journey, right? So you can have 
I guess you get everybody gets these demos, uh, demos later on. So you can sort of go through my journey with me and don't go down the same path that I went down. So this is not what we're looking at, but I just want to show you because uh, this was sort of the first step and it was actually really um, cool. It wasn't as extensible. At first I thought this was like I was going to extend when I talked to Richard Sidaway in, in the beginning. I thought I was going to reverse engineer this and I was going to extend it and then I was going to come here and present about it. But luckily, Thank you, Krishna. Uh, luckily, they exposed uh, a newer version out to GitHub, and so now it's part of the public community. And so it made my life a lot easier as a presenter because I didn't have to re reverse engineer anything. This was actually uh, open source now. And so we went on. I'll just show you what this looked like. So this is this is what it adds to your profile when you install that. And you can see here, this is the old. I call it the old script analyzer. And you would have settings like here where there were certain rules that would, uh, you could uh, turn on to do uh, static code analysis on your scripts. And these rules, were, it wasn't very extensible, um, but you'd have a, um, these rules and you'd have uh, documentation there saying what they would do and you know, invoke expressions. So we, we looked at this. Uh, Christian actually did a talk on security. So that's one of the big things that you need to look for uh, because people can run malicious code with that. Then one of the things that I hate is aliases. I mean, it's a lot of people think about aliases as job security. You write it in Klingon or Dwarvish or whatever and, and hope that nobody can read it. So, that, uh, But it's really not that great when they call you in the middle of your, your vacation. So, so try not to do that. So this is the old one and you can run, um, you can run, scan the script. So it's the current script that gets scanned. I could do that here. You'll see massive problems. So it'll check through these rules. Um, uh, and uh, it'll basically highlight all of them. So you're gonna see the line number uh, issue and problem element. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Okay, so I just wanted to show you what not to do. Don't go down this path. Okay, I don't know if I can turn that off. We'll see what it happens in the background. So the next thing is, uh, I saw there was this also, there's also some um, other solutions out there. So this is something called script cop. I don't know, how many of you have seen script cop? Okay, so this is also a script analyzer. And there are a bunch of really cool rules here. So I started looking at this as more different sources. People look at uh, different uh, code problems or uh, uh, different things. You know, everybody has their own rules. Uh, of course, you guys all have your own style, right? Uh, I mean, and we adapt the style and hopefully your company has a, a, a style that you all adapt. And that's a very important part for, um, you know, keeping or maintaining code that everyone can understand it. You know, uh, I, don't know, I don't know who said it, but I think it was also Steve who said, no magic people, no magic machines, right? Oh, yeah, you did say that. And so that's a very good thing. You don't want magic people having to interpret their code for you, right, and tell you what it's doing. So script analyzer and having these rules. Uh, I know at Microsoft we have some very hard guidelines on coding, right? You know, if you're using different editors, for example, what's the tab space? Tabs always get resolved into uh, spaces when you save it. Uh, but if you, you can imagine, somebody goes in a tab and then, I mean, uh, the code will be totally out of whack if, you, if you've edited it with different editors. So this is just one of the many things that you can think about when uh, trying to enforce best practices through a, a script analyzer. Okay, so that was also not the one. So which one do we use? And so then, we get in, then I got into here and I start seeing uh, really cool blogs and there's uh, by the product group. And here it is, this is, I guess, uh, February uh, 2015. Uh, they introduced this and they're, it's changed now a little bit. Um, uh, so good to get a script analyzer logger is no longer there. So it's changing, it's a, it's a work in progress and it's now actually out in the, in the community. So it's out on GitHub and you can actually work with it. So I downloaded it, that's the first thing I did. Um, I think this was on Saturday. Uh, the latest version, so it's at version 1.1 right now. And then I hooked up, well actually I tried to do this earlier and it wasn't working and this was when I first signed up for this and I was gonna reverse engineer stuff. And then uh, hooked up a debugger and started tracing through the rules. Uh, and these are rules, the built-in rules that come with here uh, with this script analyzer are all written in C Sharp. So that was a lot of fun because I learned a lot of stuff uh, about writing my own um, uh, like PowerShell hosts, run space hosts, and stuff like that, because a lot of the really cool stuff is going on there. And there are some new methods that I discovered. But more, what I discovered is how it interfaces and how you can actually extend this whole script analyzer through PowerShell scripts. And so, so there are two different uh, rule implementations. I mean, they're all going to be based on the same classes in the end. 
but where that information comes from from the script and is you know, like how how are those rule uh, objects actually instantiated and with what properties and those properties need to get pulled out from the script and so that was a, a uh, something that I had to do then find out where they were some things were documented in blogs and there are some really good blogs which I reference in here as well uh, I think Keith Hill does a good blog here uh, and um, so so all that said yeah there's a Keith Hill blog that I which is some real good, good information on, on this. So the next thing I did is, actually this was done quite a while ago, I sort of compiled a bunch of these rules, right? Because this is sort of the next step, you need a compilation. And some of the compilation actually happened from, with my colleagues from the past, so we have a bunch of rules. Uh, I think I have a, a newer version of this, this is also something that happened way earlier. We have about 150, 160 rules that we would like to implement, and a lot of these are already implemented in some of these tools, right? And so Script Analyzer does a lot of them. I need to update these. But I, now easily from Script Analyzer, I can pull those down because there's a commandlet to get all the rules, right? And then, so this is, you need, well, this is an idea to have this and then just go check through these uh, one by one and create them. So this sort of brings uh, a lot of things together. Uh, so I, this is in my next little thing because I sort of saw how Script Analyzer is sort of sitting up there and a lot of uh, these presentations are talking around it, right? So, um, so I, I, I listened to Jeffrey Snover yesterday and he has the Snover predictions, that's what I call them now, the Snover predictions, right? And there were a couple of those things that actually the script analyzer fit in really well with, right? So um, one thing is, okay, source control. So I, Steve talked about source control, so that's a really big thing. And having some kind of way of having a consistent managed uh, uh, development, release, and test uh, life cycle, right? Uh, then we have uh, this whole thing with getting developers actually, and I mean, I, I, I usually throw out, I'm somebody who just throws out what's at the top of my mind, and I always love it, I mean, you wouldn't think so, but I sort of like it when people say, you, shut up, you don't know what you're talking about, because that's the way I learn. Uh, otherwise, it takes me a lot of time. I, I usually, I sit at home and I, it could take me for something that I'm, I think is only five minutes, it'll be 10 hours, right? Because I'm like all over the place just investigating with GM, GM here, GM there. Uh, I should work for General Motors. And uh, <laughs> so the thing is, uh, uh, basically, that kind of conversation, which is, I mean, some people might think I'm a little bit brash, but I'll just throw stuff out. And if you don't like it, just tell me. Well, that's the thing. It doesn't work with all cultures. So some people hit me. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. But, but others are just quiet, OK? But no hard feelings if I spoke out in one of your talks. I know somebody was going to come here and revenge of the bad question asker. Uh, somebody threatened they're not here. This is the guys from the, no, did you threaten me? No. <laughs> so, so then the other thing is, a uh, big part here is the, uh, you know, the open community, right? And so I think you've all noticed this. Uh, I'm really, really happy and I'm actually, I'd almost say proud to, to work at Microsoft. Now I, I used to not be able to say that. Sorry, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but I, I really like this whole movement toward open source, right, and uh, the community. And I think we can only win from that. And I think, I don't know, I have my own theories about some, some things, how some things are happening in some product groups and why, but I'm really happy where it's going. And that's also one of the big things, right, open source is one of uh, what I call now the, uh, the Sonova predictions. Uh, and then, okay, building, I heard him say this yesterday too, so I just noted it. But building on top of the abstract uh, syntax tree, which what this uh, script analyzer is doing as well. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. Um, so this is where this is where actually the latest sources are. So like I said, I have a whole bunch of links here, uh, just so that you, if you want to go in there, uh, this is great because you can just get to the sources. You need a, a Git account, right? And uh, but you can just get to the sources here, and and read through the documentation. Now all the documentation is done in something called MD which is called the Markdown document. I never heard of that. I think we were talking, Kristen, you, you told me what MD stands for yesterday. Yeah. But this is like a GitHub, this is a GitHub standard. And then I looked it up last night and, and one of the big things, or one of the big um, uh, advantages of it is it's very easily uh, turned into HTML. So I think that's why people use it. And if you look at these MDs here, right here, you can look at the change log, it goes right into HTML. But it's actually a bunch of, it's a markup language itself with a bunch of funny hashes and I can't make heads or tails of it. Somebody, you're a yeah. documenter, maybe you know the syntax better, but it looks like nothing I've seen before. I would not know how to edit it. It's very it. easy and if you, okay. if you download, <laughs> sorry, if you download Markdown Pad, it comes uh -huh. with help that gives you, you know, the little 
um, all of the markings that you need to mark something up. It's okay. about the simplest markup. And, and the editor in GitHub will. We'll actually do that. Okay, because because this is one thing that I, I saw that with this release at least the it's there's not integrated into the help system, so there's some help uh, in in this version. But that's I think a step would need to happen too, because when you create these, you know, this is what this part of the journey is. We're gonna actually gonna uh, go through the steps of creating uh, rules as scripts, right? And there, of course, everybody knows comment based help, right? So that's easy enough. But to get these MDs, because now we, uh, if we go go down here into the rules. Um, there are a bunch of rules. I think, did I put them in here? I know I have a link here to the rules a little bit later on. Uh, I could get to them through here as well. Um, the, the rules here, I just have to browse through here, uh, through the rules, and there. And so here, the, there are MDs here as well. Uh, is it in the rules? I think they're down here. No, they're not. But there's another directory for the, I forgot where the MDs are. Uh, I think it was probably higher. I have a, a link down there. I, I don't want you to go down all those like dead ends that I've gone down. That's why I created the script. Okay, so you can sort of follow through my journey. Uh, so the next thing is what you, if you want to download it, of course you can download it. And this is the latest version. So and I put in, I took in, uh, took the note also that I think I don't know was it Steve again? Sorry if I'm late. Really? Like, but the or somebody said or Richard said, uh, you know when you do I don't blog. This is my blog. When you do blog, always reference what version you're talking about, put a date or something like that. And so that's, uh, I think is really important. So if you go into the script and you see that comment, okay, maybe there's something newer, that link is probably not that uh, current anymore. Okay, so you get all this stuff down really easy. I can check it out. You know, I have the default repository is PS Gallery. You can change your repositories, but I, I have two, so I do wanna use this one. And uh, find module, which you know from PowerShell get, right? Uh, will actually go out to the repository. And you can see it. So this will actually download the binary. Uh, and this is the first step for you guys. I don't know how many of you feel comfortable enough in C Sharp to actually add to the rules, do you think? OK, so some of you. And so it's a really a choice uh, um, uh, where you feel more comfortable in. Uh, and also, I think the community, we, I guess are all here for the PowerShell community. I think this is for the PowerShell community. It's a PowerShell script analyzer. So. It, it would be, I don't know if it'd be better, but I would weigh it uh, more important to have it out in the open community as script as opposed to C Sharp. But it's great to have both. Um, and I think there, it's in flux too, so there's a lot of things happening there. Uh, so uh, from the day that I first said, or first looked at it, to the day I actually started my journey, which four days ago, I saw that there was, uh, for example, when you report an error, there's a, now there's a new type, and that type is also in a little, there's some properties in the type um, uh, that are also possibly changing. So it's a, it's a process in, it's, it's, it's a moving, moving product. So then you have different ways to load it down, download it, so you can do save module, and then you know, investigate it. These are the common things, if you go up to PS Gallery, these are the common ways to download packets now, nougats, okay? Uh, and then you have install module. So I've done this already, and actually, I've, I can't remember if I, uh, I'm going to be actually working against the compiled version that I have in my Visual Studio uh, so as a solution. Okay, so now let's, yeah? You have this comment up there, no will require elevated admin token? Uh, that was, uh, see, this is no longer, this is, uh, yes, this is true, yeah. because uh, by default install. it will put it in, the, in the, the PowerShell modules, which I'm so happy about. Now there's an actually a really nice path, because that V1 was annoying the hell out of me. Uh, and also that it was in system, but you still need to be elevated. So it'll put it under program files, uh, backslash Windows PowerShell, backslash modules, and you need to be elevated for that. But you can use You can change, you could you could change that. So this is, I could take, yeah. You can scope and then you can use it. Ah, cool. So I can do a scope in here? Minus yeah. scope. Oh, cool. And then current user. Oh, cool. And then I'll put it in your user profile documents with this PowerShell. Ah, oh, that's a really long one. Okay, so I'd like, okay, cool, but I didn't know that. So this is really cool. So then I'll take this away, uh, and then I will do, uh, so this is this is also a, a script in progress, and that's sort of a nice thing. I mean, who, how many people could do this on the fly in, in PowerPoint? Probably not that many, but I can just say, um, I can just do it. Well, there was somebody who did uh, automation of something over there, right, just uh, today. So I could do this, uh, uh, or use scope. <coughs> See, now you see why I don't do this. Okay. 
So, so then the next thing we're going to do is, and this is there's going to be some overlap here with uh, what Tobias did. He's got some awesome little commandlets that, or advanced functions that he wrote, uh, and I just hacked some together. Uh, they pretty much do the same thing. He probably went through a journey similar to mine. I'm I'm guessing, maybe not uh, as compressed in time. Um, so. That's my excuse why mine are hacks and his are nice. Uh, but, uh, so, but let's just take a look at this. So, so here, this is basically, we can see uh, there's a manifest, right? For all modules, you can have a manifest for loading it so that we can see a little bit of information here. Okay, that was kind of dumb. I, don't, I think that was part of what I thought I would look at, but I didn't really need to look at. Uh, and then we have, um, here are the actual modules. So I can import it. So now that uh, the module that I actually built, so this is actually at a path, these are uh, paths I initialize up top. I didn't want to hard code anything, so then I'm just going to, if I put this out there, you can just change this path if you decide to go down this journey with me uh, and put it in your own pass. okay? So, so the next thing what I wanted to do is uh, I wanted to, actually in this initialization, I actually did something here, um, and this is what you would do if you wanted to load it from, like I said, program files, um, Windows 7, um, Windows PowerShell. But I just want to show you here, um, what it looks, I use this sometimes just to see, maybe it didn't actually, maybe I didn't do it, uh, I think I, I probably took it out. I just wanted to show you to see which assemblies are being loaded. I think of uh, assemblies always as like, basically they're cookbooks, right? And each class is a recipe, that's how I talk about it. Uh, and so if you want to make a recipe, you say what, you know, how do you want to, yeah, I'm I'm, I don't work for those guys, but it's sort, of a, it's sort of like I'm in a kitchen. I like food a lot, so it's a really good analogy for me. Um, so I just go to the, you know, I go to my constructor who's my cook and say, hey, you know, whip me up a, a spaghetti and I would like, you know, bolognese, uh, extra spicy, and those are my parameters, right? Gingerbread. Uh, for my, yeah, <laughs> gingerbread spaghetti, no thanks. Uh, okay, so anyway, I don't know what I did here. But I want, I thought we could look here a little bit. Um, so this is something that I do a lot, and I don't know, do you guys use Aldasm or does anybody ever like reverse engineer or, or reflect on what's going on? Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so, but you have all this really cool help uh, in partial ISC, and I'm guessing a lot of you know about this, but I shouldn't assume, right? But if you if you write out a namespace, right? So this is my cook. This is my cookbook, Italian food, and down here we get into piggy me, and then we get into uh, whatever antipasta, and then you know, then we're in prosciutto, uh, and then we have prosciutto cotto, right? Okay. So this is my prosciutto cotto. So this is my recipe. This is my food class, right? And now I want to. What's really cool is if you get down to the class level, I can find out. Hey, what cookbook are you in? It goes all the way back up to the assembly, right? And so if I go, I go down to assembly, then I can get to exported, uh, and this is the cool thing, there's actually a, uh, all types you can look at too, but I can just look at all the exported types in here. And there's a whole bunch of really cool, and this is just for later thought. I would have gone down this path, it would have taken me another two weeks probably, uh, but there's so many cool things, like here, this is a class called helper. What do you think is in there? Helpers. Yeah, a bunch of helper <laughs> utility. There are a bunch of cool methods that are gonna make your life easier. So. The nice thing is you have the source code for this. So uh, if you're like me and you, and you think that, okay, it's good to have as a, a script, go into the source code and just convert this, the, the cool parts in, that you think and you want to modify into PowerShell, very, very easy, or just use the stuff, uh, the helper functions that exist here. So there's a lot of really cool stuff here. And there's actually, yeah, there, there's a ton of really cool stuff. And it's, uh, it's things that you can add to as well. Okay, and then we have ILDASM. I decided, I guess, I have the path up there, so I have my ILDASM, uh, ILDASM path. Okay, so I could start it now and put, put a path to a file, but I'm not gonna do it. Okay, I think you've all seen it, and I think it looks nicer in PowerShell anyway. Uh, ILDASM gets, it's not a very pretty tool in my opinion. So, let's see what commands uh, are actually in this. And there are only two at, at this version. We're at version 1.1 now at, at 7th, uh, 15th of September, 2015. Uh, and there are two here. So there's get script analyzer rule and invoke script analyzer. So the get script analyzer rule, right, um, will basically um, just get you uh, the rules, right? And you can say name star. These are all the new the rules that are um, they're built in rules uh, by default. You can, however, um, so everything that's written as a script rule is actually called a custom rule. And you need to actually add a specific, uh, an additional uh, parameter there, customized rule path. And then you have to pa actually point to either a PS1 file or a PSD or a PSM file. And it will actually load those. Now I'm going to tell you what it 
I, I wrote a little formula here, what you need to think about when you write these script for, uh, scripts, because there are a few things that, like I said, uh, the PowerShell rule engine will actually look at in your script to pull out the information to build a rule object, which is then going to be run by the engine to actually do the analysis. Okay, so um, there's, there are a few things, and I think there's, I mean, this is also something in flux, so there's going to be changes there too. I have some ideas already, because one thing, for example, here you can see one of the properties here is severity. And severity currently, from what I could tell, and my tracing in the code, is uh, set to warning for all script ones. So I'll customize it. I don't know if you can verify, but I, that's what my, my limited C-sharp uh, skills tell me. Um, so uh, then we have, uh, so I guess, see, you can tell that I had an error here when I did this last time. So I was error, <laughs> I was, uh, but it worked nicely now. So, um, uh, so the next thing is here, I can actually look have a couple of custom scripts. These are ugly. Um, um, but if I want to look at only custom scripts, I actually need to do, there, currently there's no uh, parameter for that. Uh, and if I say customize rules, it doesn't take only the customized rules. It takes all the rules plus my customize. So I need to write a little um, uh, filter there. So first off, we can take a look at what a rule looks like, right? So if I do a rule here, I love doing my pipelines in the end because I can always tack on a GM and then comment it out and my pipeline still works nicely downstream, right? So here's, here's what a uh, rule looks like and you can see it comes out of this namespace. So here's my cookbook, Microsoft Windows PowerShell Script Analyzer generic uh, rule info. And here are the different properties that are of interest. So uh, one of them that I told you here, the severity is not something that um, you, can, um, you can set so let's take a look at this here. Oops, that was bad. I wanted to do something else. I wanted to do GM. Okay, it's still too good. I just wanted to show you, you know, that a lot of these are just getters, right? So actually when the actual rule is, is set, uh, once the rule object is created, you can't actually modify these, right? So, so these are, uh, I don't know how many are familiar with that, that terminology, getter, setter. So you can, so read only is uh, a getter. And uh, ironically, there's some, like Active Directory has write only, uh, no, uh, write only uh, attributes as well. That's where the hidden functionality is. If you know the name of the attribute, you write to it and things, magic happens. Okay, I shouldn't tell you those things. Uh, well, you're never going to find them because they don't expose themselves unless you have source code access. Okay, so um, so let's see here. Um, but it's a cool way to hide functionality. Um, so let's. So this is basically doing this. Uh, it just went through my. You can see that my lovely names here. At first, I didn't know that names don't have it um, because I saw some samples, and then I started seeing that there's no consistency there either. So this is also something, a uh, good discussion in that you guys all know that we have the approved verbs, right? Uh, um, the same thing, I don't see any consistency today. So this is open community, so this is open for discussion. And one of the big things also is uh, input, you know, make a, make a mark here on what the future is going to look like because it's going to affect you. So um, the naming convention, I thought maybe there was something in there at first, when I first, this is my journey, like I said, but it has nothing to do with the name of the function. There are other attributes of the function. It's actually the parameter. Uh, the first parameter in your function is that det that what determines that it becomes a rule. Okay, and so we'll look at that in a bit. Uh, but you can see here that you know I can even put foo test in there, and it, and it works as a rule, right? So, but they're all uh, warning. And what you can see here also the description is missing in some places, and I'll tell you why because there's certain information that you need to provide in your script uh, to allow that uh, to be populated into the rule. Um, okay, so I wrote a little note here. Currently, uh, warning severity by default. Okay, and this is my idea. I, I, I mentioned this uh, yesterday to uh, Krishna, but maybe one can use the confirm impact in the commandlet. You know, high, medium, low, and that could be severity, uh, because then you already have that in your script. Okay, so actually, here's my documentation for the rules. Right, so here you can see a lot of the rules that have been implemented today, and so. Um, Take that over here. So you can see here, avoid alias is one of my favorites uh, because I just don't like aliases. Uh, I mean, they're great for quick interaction, but not for having in your scripts. And here it tells you, basically there's a description, uh, how it works or what it's looking for. 
but we're going to now soon go into the details of actually what it does. Okay, and this is where I'm going to have a, a, quite a bit of overlap with um, Tobias. So uh, the next thing here is okay. So running rules um, or running a script analyzer on a script could take a really long time. And we had this discussion also yesterday. Some rules may take longer to analyze than others, right? Because you need to find patterns and you have to define those and it's not that easy. And I'm gonna show you what I did to make it easier for myself um, uh, to discover this whole big uh, space called AST, right? Um, so where am I going here? Yeah, so basically going through all that takes a long time. So you may want to exclude certain rules. And so there are lots of different ways of doing that. So I just bring this in as well. There, um, what you can do here is you can basically get all the rules of a specific uh, severity. And as we know, our rules are all, all the script rules are all warning, okay. But you can also, you know, base it on name or whatever. So you can create a whole, uh, a whole array of um, rules that you can then either add to include or exclude, right? So there's exclude rule or, or include rule. Actually, I want to do exclude here. Uh, and then when you run this, um, uh, it, it will work. And it looks like I didn't finish this, but they're actually, it's kind of cool. They actually added a bunch of uh, new stuff. And it's kind of interesting if you go up on the GitHub in the community and you look at the, the forum, the conversations, there are a lot of things that have are been slated for future releases that are already in this release and they haven't been updated that they've already been checked off. So I went through there last night and I said, hey, wow, I already saw that and I already saw that. So it's happening really, really fast. Uh, like this recurse was just added recently. I don't know if, are you following it a lot, Krishna, or is it more Ragnu? Uh, so Ragnu is doing it. Oh, he's doing it, yeah. okay, okay. So uh, then we have this thing called profile, uh, um, a, parameter called profile where you can also create a hash table here with the rules and here you specify the names, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a hash table and uh, it containing severity. So it's basically like splatting, right? Um, and then you, uh, but you don't splat it, but it's basically like splatting, right? You, here you have severity include rules and, and exclude rules just like you would have as parameters, but it's used differently. So uh, in essence, one could, one could use it. I don't know, can you splat one parameter? No. It's maybe splatted internally. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, what this would look like. So maybe I sh I'm probably gonna, I'm always a time optimist, so I always think everything, oh, okay, so it went through, that wasn't it. Yeah, I went through some of them and there were some problems with some other ones. Uh, invoke, unable to find the specified file. Okay, so that's not a, a big problem because it still found some stuff. Um, avoid, I guess you have to look at this particular uh, uh, file here, which is a really ugly hack. I probably shouldn't show you this because I don't even remember what's on there. I think it was really late. Uh, uh, and there might be some really nasty stuff in there. So do I dare? Let's see. Uh, it wasn't that bad. Uh, things like will never happen anyway, like win lottery was in there. Um, and um, okay, just a lot of foo in there. Okay, foo bar. You can tell it was getting towards the evening hours. So, okay. So um, then you can also do something else. So this is one way to include and exclude specific rules. But then you can also do something like this. There's an attribute that you can add to your script. So you can actually do it in line in your script. Uh, and there's an attribute that actually comes out of the .NET framework. Uh, so it's not specific to these partial analyzer um, uh, framework. It's called suppressed message attribute. And this is used in a lot of other languages as well to suppress uh, certain compilation errors or, yeah, compilation errors. So. Um, Okay, I went, see, this is how I do it. I have this little function called get constructor. I wanted to see how this thing is actually being created, what the, uh, you know, what I can pass in for parameters. You probably don't go down the same length I do. I get construct everything to see how, what I can do, uh, how I can build it, if it has a constructor, so not all classes have constructors, uh, and things like that. Okay, so let's continue and just take a look at what this would look like. So when you put this attribute in your script file, uh, it has, so the, um, um, the generic one, so this is system diagnostic code analysis uh, suppressed message attribute, actually only has, and this is something I really know about, it only has a constructor that takes uh, two uh, parameters, right? A category and a check ID. And here in, in, in uh, the analyzer, you actually have others. So I think you, there's probably some, some way you can overload uh, attributes as well, which I don't know about. Uh, but there's probably an overload here because they've added some additional ones. 
So you can actually say, this right here is actually the name of the, the rule that you'd like to suppress, and then you can actually specify a scope and a target. Uh, the scope will, uh, looking at the source code, I looked, the scope can be either class or function, and so you can set the scope on a particular target, the target being the actual object that you would like to, or, uh, sorry, the actual object that you would like to be uh, uh, excluded. So here, this, in this case, it's a function called positional parameters allowed, right? And so this particular one here, uh, calling it down here, uh, whoops, I actually didn't do it, uh, would, uh, no, yeah, would uh, allow me to do it with that particular uh, one. Okay, so I, I'm just gonna pass through here. This is more something, because I see that I'm gonna probably run out of time. I wanna get to the interesting stuff. Um, I think you should take off the parents at the end of your function, because it's more the developer stuff. It's not PowerShell. Oh, this thing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, I think I cut and paste this out of something. Uh, and then I, I take a lot of C-sharp code and modify it into, uh, into PowerShell. Uh, and then I forget that the one thing that helps me always is I don't never have to worry about the, the line delimiter because it, it works, right? Some people actually think it's part of the hash table syntax. It's not. It's just that you can put much, many, but it's one of those things that drives me crazy. Just keep it in a block and get rid of those things. Okay, anyway, I, I, you can tell I have a lot of pet peeves. So, um, so the next thing is, and now we're getting in a little overlap with what uh, Tobias did, and this is, this is where it gets down to the meat of things. Because we need to, or what the community needs you guys to do is to contribute to uh, implementing new rules, right? And these need to be done as scripts, or don't need to be done as scripts, but the easiest way to do it is through scripts. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to be able to identify a pattern, right, uh, within our script that we're, we want to, uh, highlight as a, a rule infraction, right? We need to define our rule basically, right? I defined a really stupid rule. Maybe I should just uh, go down further and show you what I've done uh, because I definitely will run out of time otherwise. Um, like I said, a time optimist. Uh, but this is also just sort of a little bit of discovery right here. And I, I wrote a little, um, a little function later on. This is basically just to show you what happens. Uh, there is a, um, a parser within, and how many of you have been to Tobias's talk on this? Okay, so pretty much most of you <laughs> have seen this already. Uh, but basically there's a parser there that allows you to parse and the results that you get back can be, um, will be actually AST objects. Uh, and so, so you basically can pass in here a script, and so I do this a lot here. So this, like you can see here, is a, a static uh, method. Uh, wow, this is horrible with the, the screen being so small. But this is something I do a lot, and I don't know how many of you do this, because I don't like to have to go on to MSDN. I just do this, right? And then I get the overload definitions. You just run any function. Uh, how many of you have seen that before or do that? Okay, you all do that, so nothing new. But for those who haven't, it's really helpful, right? Because you don't have to do any guesswork anymore. Um, so anyway, um, this is what uh, Tobias talked about too. So when you actually do um, parsing of this script, uh, off of this thing called an AST block. So that's what you get back from here. So let's just do this here. Uh, did I define the script? I guess I did. Let's see if we have an AST object back. Yeah, we do. Okay, so now what you do is, uh, there's a parameter, there's a, uh, a method here called find all. And you can basically find anything, and there's a parameter called a search nested script blocks. Uh, you can find anything in that, um, this thing called AST, uh, that meets a certain criteria. And so this is gonna be a Boolean filter, right? It's like a where object, you know? This is your where object, it's a filter block, right? And your filter block, you can do it many, 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 one of many ways. You can either be really old school and you know, very clear, yeah, define, param. All script blocks can have params, right? You have a param, and then you have the name of the param, and this is basically the AST objects that are gonna be going through this filter. And then you just have a Boolean statement here. So it's gonna resolve into Boolean, true or false. And if it's true, then those are the objects that you want out. And so I can look in this AST block for a very specific AST, um, for a very specific AST objects. And I'm gonna show you this because at first it's a huge amount of different types and you're gonna be lost like I was. So I created this little uh, tool called um, uh, AST dump. And let's just, let's just go down there. Uh, create a uh, script download, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I created this, uh, okay, I'm just gonna skip through here. So this is, this is where the meat of it is because this is where I think you guys are valuable, right? So uh, how you can contribute and that's what this, 
I sort of feel this is only my way, my only way of blogging because I never do it else, but to sort of give something to the community and hopefully you use it, but also for Microsoft. Um, so, uh, so this is what you should do. You should write rules, script, contribute to open source through GitHub, uh, give feedback to the community. Like it was said earlier, it's not only contributing through uh, coding, but also contributing through comments and feedback and use. That's almost more valuable than actually contributing to uh, not everybody's going to be able to find the time and have the, the uh, drive to actually do the coding, but to use it, I think you can all see, appreciate this as a tool. So feedback is only going to help you. And then you can even do further things, and uh, uh, Tobias is looking at this possibly too, but actually the, uh, there's, there's an API uh, that's actually uh, just released as well, so you can actually link in and have your own logger, so you can create your own logger and things like that. Okay, so the next thing is here, how do you create your own custom rule? So these are the steps that I write, uh, I wrote down what you need to do. So you implement it as, a, as, a, as functions in a script, PS1, blah, blah, blah. A first parameter must be of an AST or token type, okay? And that later on here, I have references here to AST and, and tokens. So you can see the whole namespace. It's a really big thing, AST token is not that big. Uh, it's just a class, uh, but it's a really big namespace. Then it, important here, uh, use comment based help and use the description key work. Uh, work. Uh, uh, it, it will work, maybe that's where my bug is, uh, if you write description, okay? Because uh, it'll be used as a property for the rule then later on. Then uh, you need to, for every infraction of your rule, you need to create a diagnostics record, and that's also very easy, you know? Uh, you just do that, and I'll show you this later. Then you should use localized strings. I've seen a lot of uh, PowerShell modules and stuff use this, but unfortunately only support ENUS. So if you have a language, uh, I don't know, I, I don't know, that's a lot of work too, right? And there's money involved there too to get people to localize stuff. Uh, but I've, okay, I won't get into things that I've seen that are not good, but uh, that's for another topic. Okay, and then, um, uh, what did I write here? No to date. So, oh yeah, so it's hard coded as a warning. Okay, so you should just be aware of that. It'll show up as a warning, but it doesn't mean that you can't change that when you create the actual object. It, remember, it's a getter, but in the constructor you can set it. Okay, so these, then what I did is here. Wait, can, can, you, stop? Can, you, can you go back to the comment based help with the description keyword? I didn't see the end of the screen, I'm sorry. It's oh yeah, button. neither did I, so it's, it's just here. Uh, will be used when displaying uh, the rule go property. Cool, gotcha, thank okay. you. So, yeah, can maybe, can everybody still see you this? What, like that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so right. the, first, uh, the first parameter has to be the uh, has to be an AST token, and we're gonna okay. yeah. So I but have, have, but you can you, you can have other parameters to a rule. I don't know what the, how they'd be used uh, to date. Oh, uh, so the rule, like, like for example, like with RuboCop, huh? uh, line length is a rule that it checks, and by default huh? it's saying 80 characters. But you can override that in a config file. For oh, okay. The project. Yeah. So this is very different. Yeah. So what happens here is uh, your rule. You need to have some kind of uh, some smarts uh, to analyze, and you can do whatever you want in there. So the rule is basically going to be called, and it's going to give you an AST. That's how it starts off. So basically, it just gives you, hey, bloop, here's your script. Now, what do you want to do with it? it? It gives you this object model, basically, to do your analysis with. That's all. That's the only reason why you get it. Either you get the tokens or you get AST. Right. So, and then what you do inside the script is very different. There, you need to do some analysis. You can use AST or not, and I'm going to show you my journey where I, and I hope I get through this. I'm just going to, I'm going to browse through this really quickly. So I have this, <laughs> uh, so here, I have this little hack functions here, and I'm just going to define these up really quick. And then I have, uh, of course, here's my script that I, is definitely an error, right? Your salary is 100, my salary is 50. And I'm going to write a rule because my salary should not be under 100, okay? So it's a, this is my minimum, uh, uh, minimum uh, pay salary, or this is my script to make sure that salaries are never under 100, okay? So that's what my rule is going to be. And so what I have is here, first I'm going to, this, I defined it as my breaker rule. Okay, so I have my AST now. This is what it looks like. And this is where I got a little overwhelmed. You get this big old object here that has a bunch of things, but how do I pull data out of here? Uh-oh, five minutes. Okay, so, so I created this little thing called dump AST. And what dump AST does, it just takes all, oops, it doesn't do anything right now. Let's see, where's my functions? Did I do this hacker functions? Ah, uh, you know what I did? I renamed them and I forgot to do that down the script because I thought if I run this script on mine, it won't like my name. So I call them dump AST object now. So. Uh, and it should never be plurals in there, so that was kind of dumb, so dump, uh, dump AST, dump AST, here we go. Okay, 
So, so what it does is it basically goes. <laughs> so, 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 uh, so, okay, it made a big dump in any case. <laughs> and so what I did is in this dump AST is it, it, it grabs the AST and then it finds out ASTs can be, uh, um, it's a big collection of other ASTs, right? The ASK script block is at the, at the root. And there can be multiple of the same type. So what I did is I basically look for all the unique ones and then I do a filter for each unique one. And so then I list them out here. And this was my journey, uh, learning journey, because I think for most of you is like, how the, you know, blankety blank, are you gonna go through all those different uh, classes and figure out what you need to parse through this? So here you get a very cool uh, listing of all the different AST blocks, right? And I know that Tobias used friendly names, so he chopped off the AST, I think. But, I'm, uh, but so here you can get an idea, okay, and then you look at it, okay, my salary. I can look at all these ASTs, they all have a bit of a salary. Which one is most interesting? I think this one's good, assignment statement AST. So now I'm going, to, I'm going to use this, incorporate this AST in my rule because I can get out, look, I can get out the left is my salary, and on the right I can get out a value, right? And these are, this is enough to compare to see if this rule is broken or not. Okay, so the next step that I do here, um, and I hopped over a bunch of other like going things. The next step I do is here, I create this, uh, this function, right? And here's my first thing, right? It's just a script block. So this is the entry point into my rule, okay? So that's the first thing. This is first step. So I broke this up in steps. The second, or this third step. Third step is I actually add my documentation. Here's my description. Minimum wage rule of 100 has been violated, okay? We never want that to happen. Okay, so, so here it is. This is what it looks like. And now the fourth step, this is where actually the hard work starts. But it's not really that hard if you have the ST dump, in my opinion, because it gives you an idea. So what I did then is I... Um, well, I basically wrote this code here, but how did I get to this code? Okay, and here in the end, you can see this is where my violations happens, right? This is a real easy statement, if statement. If assignment left uh, matches uh, salary, okay, that's what I look from, from my dump, right? These are the two properties, but these two properties are actually objects in themselves, and they don't, you can't do comparisons like this. I can't do a regular expression with it because it's not a string. It's actually a bigger object, and it's two string does not uh, resolve into something that match will work with. So, through debugging, so this is the next step you do, and this is what's really easy. Uh, you just load up something like here. I think I have some here, debug rules. Okay, you can see debug here. So I, I stick it in, a, you, you guys have been debug, debugging everybody, I'm sure. You just stick this in a, in a file, right? And then what I do is I put this in here, and I call it myself, right? I just call it like that with the AST that I got from uh, get AST, from the other commandlet. And then I stick, stick a breakpoint here, F9. And then I go into this area right here. You can already see that I resolved it here. This is what it would look like before I did, uh, did the discovery, right? And I do F5, and I go F5 again, and I didn't hit my breakpoint because I didn't set one, right? Did I not, I didn't set one. Okay, where's my here, F9, uh, boom. Okay, and now we're in here, and now I can take, start taking a look at this, right? I can look at this, these objects, you know, with a highlight, and I can see that left is, Left is actually an integer, but if I look at it on the screen, it's actually not, right? It's kind of weird, see? It's another object again. And you know, I can, I can traverse down there, left, child, variable type. And then I get down to the, I finally get down to the actual string. So you may need to do some discovery here, and it's very helpful to just load into debugger, and then you, instead of like having to read lots of documentation and, and try, I think this is, for me at least, it's the easiest way, discovery through debugging, right? Uh, and then just use the beauty of PowerShell to highlight and, and run interactively. The same thing applies over on this side here. I can just F8 that, and I can see it's a different object, right? It's an expression. So I need to go down into those a little bit deeper, and so you can see here, actually, that's what I did. On, this, on the right side here, I got down to 100, and on the left side here, I got down to value path. And then I have my, my <coughs> actually rule all set up. So, whoops, didn't highlight something. Uh, user path. I guess I needed one more, right? User, oops, I'm in the debugging so I can't cha change. Okay, so you get the point here. So now uh, let's remove all, uh, stop debugging. I have it all debugged and everything. Uh, disable, I'll remove all breakpoints. Uh, and then we go back into here, so into our next step. So we got it all nice and debugged and I forgot to copy the working one over here. Ah, there's my bug. Where is it? Okay, well, anyway, I was looking for a bug earlier. Uh, and then I, so then I just save it here as a rule. Here's avoid low salary. 
And here I have the rule actually worked out uh, properly, right? If left child, blah, blah, blah. So I, 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 I broke it all out here. And this is in a path. It's just stored as a PS1 file, but it could be a PSM1, a PSM file as well. And um, let's can, just... Can you go back? Why did you say salary dollar? Uh, yeah, I did do salary dollar uh, somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, you did a regex match. In I did a regex. Oh, I did. I did. Salary, I did do a dollar because I want because it, it could be any salary, not only my, but yeah. end of a regular expressions. A dollar means that it's an anchor at the right, end of the. Right. Okay, but is the dollar and still you're, there? And you're at time, just a okay, but anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> so you're at dollar. <laughs> okay, so 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 okay, so now we're at step five, and basically, you know, you just shove that thing into a file. Use your custom rule path, and this is uh, I got. I wanted to actually get this working properly, but it does work. I had it working once, and now I, I messed something up. And uh, this is this is the end of the journey for you guys. Uh, but you should. I mean, hopefully this uh, this kind of framework for discovery of this and seeing the possibilities how you can extend this um, has been of help for you guys. I think maybe you can benefit from it. The only help that you find here is. Uh, uh, that is integrated in PowerShell is this about script analyzer currently, <coughs> these MD files. And then I guess the last bit here, moving forward, and then I'm, I'm done here, uh, basically provide feedback, um, you know, get on here, there's a wiki here. And I didn't know about this, very thankful to Krishna, this, this, this is what these conferences are all about, interfacing, right? Uh, but there's uh, really good information here about what's going on here. Uh, right now, currently it's not open to everybody, but it, uh, from what I hear, there's plans on opening it up. Uh, these community talks. And so you can see what's actually been talked about uh, around the rules, or community rules. There are several rules that uh, can be, um, that are also currently in a hidden, <laughs> hidden, uh, hidden, my head is off. Okay. <laughs> okay, but in any case, here are community rules. Uh, I, I, I show you what the rules are here. You can, I've downloaded them. These are in the um, private gallery right now, but they're also gonna be a repository. They're also gonna be exposed at some point. Uh, yeah, and I just uh, hope that you go out and, oh, crap. One thing, I have to show you this, and sorry, uh, Richard, but this is the, just a preview of the, uh, the next version that will come out. So uh, just take a look at this, because this is really cool. And this is what will be added on to uh, in the months to come. Oops, if I can't get it running here. Uh, but this one here, okay, so I'm going to just, uh, I don't know what's happened to this. Let's just save this. Let me just... This is just one minute because it's really worth it. Um, 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 let me just go down to that. No, it's really definitely worth it because this is the next uh, version of Script Analyzer. You remember the first version I showed you where it had the, the add-on and, and all the cool rules that you can extensible? This is the two coming together and it's really, really cool. Uh, and so that's why I want to show you. It's not publicly available yet, and so, uh, but I just want to show you this because I think it'll also give you a little kick to get on the bandwagon and start uh, scripting in this area because it's gonna be cool. Really, really cool. Uh, let's just go down here to the load, load her up. And then we're done. Okay. Okay, it's... Uh, Yay! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! <laughs> That's not it. That's not it. <laughs> oh, crap. Okay, I'll, if anybody wants to see it, I'll show it to you. It's not... Oh, it's just horrible. I'm so sorry that I couldn't show this. Do I have one minute to try to get this? No. no. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's there. It's there. Okay, cool. I'll push the button, then you can't see it online, but there you go. But this, for those who want to stay around, uh, I'll gladly show this. 